Welcome to Keyboard Shortcuts, the Microsoft Office tricks that everyone should know. This is Les McCarter from Power Up Training, and I'm focusing on productivity tips that all Microsoft Office users must know. First off, there are hundreds of internet websites that provide unending rows of shortcuts that you'll never be able to memorize and rarely need to use. Here at Power Up Training, we provide practical tips by focusing on the top 10 keyboard most useful shortcuts, plus a few bonus strategies for keyboard navigation and text selection. Here's a preview of what we'll be showing, and you can compare what you already know with what I'll be teaching you. All in under 13 minutes. Do note that while we'll be showing these tricks in PowerPoint, the commands are good in all Microsoft Office products going back to the very beginning and up to the latest versions of Office 365. Plus, at this point, they have become standards and you'll find them in other text-based software. Let's set the foundation by talking about your keyboard. Most of the shortcuts will be comprised of combo keystrokes. This is where you hold down one key and then press a second key in combination. For our practical tips, the combo key will almost always start with the control key, but sometimes you will use the shift key. On almost all keyboards, there's a matching set of the control and shift key on both sides of the keyboard. It does not matter which one you elect to use. Other shortcuts utilize the top row of keys that are called function keys. Each software may use this differently, but Microsoft Office tools have a few standardized shortcuts that we'll cover. The top row of function keys go from F1 through F12 and require just a single tap, but they too may have a combo such as the Shift F7 key for launching the thesaurus, but more on that later. Lastly, most modern keyboards have recruited the function keys into double duty, doing one type of command when pressed, like muting your sound, and another command when holding down the FN key as a combo, typically the smaller sized indicator, in this case, the function keys require the use of the FN key. Okay, let's go power up on our shortcut keys. The first five are centered around editing, Copy will put what is highlighted in the clipboard for future use. Paste will drop the contents of the clipboard into our current cursor location. And Cut will delete what is highlighted, putting it into the clipboard for future use. We'll also see the editing tools of spell check and the synonym finder. So let's go do it. I will drop out of our PowerPoint slideshow viewer mode into the PowerPoint slide working view. First up, copy. I'm going to highlight item one with my mouse, and I will then use the keyboard to hold down the control key. And then while holding down the key, also tap the letter C to copy. Now that line one is in the clipboard and still on our slide, let's drop the clipboard contents with the paste command by moving to a new spot, clicking to select the location, and then paste with control V that pulls the contents out of our clipboard and puts it down at the new spot. Now let's contrast this with the cut command. Cut will remove what is highlighted and put it into the clipboard. And then we can use the same paste command to relocate the contents. Let's try it. I have line three highlighted, and I will use the cut command with the letter X in combination of the control key being pressed first. Now, instead of a copy of the text, the cut command removed what was highlighted and put it into the clipboard. Next, I will move to the new location and use the paste of control plus V and put the clipboard contents in the new spot effectively moving the text from one location to the next. How to remember these? C for copy is easy. For paste, think of the V as the proofreading symbol for inserting a mark here. And for cut, 
Think of the X as a giant remove X mark. Let's hit the next two quickly, as the F7 function key will launch the spell check tool for whichever Microsoft program you're running. Let me introduce a spelling error, and then we'll run the F7 for spell checker and see the corrected word, which we can then replace. For the thesaurus tool, you should first select the word you want suggestions for, and then hold down the shift key and press F7, and the tool will pop up on the right. Let's look for an alternative to the word change. You'll see them listed on the right side. We'll select one and choose insert. Now let's go to formatting shortcuts. The first three are quick and easy for bold and italic and underline. And then I will demonstrate the ever so useful remove formatting command. So use your mouse to select the text you want to format. Here, we're gonna highlight Control plus B, and then I'll hold down the Control key and press the letter B to bold it. And I'll do the same for Control I for italic and Control U for underline. Note that these are toggle commands, meaning that if you repeat the command, it will turn the formatting off or back on again. Here I have a selection of text turned on, and I'm doing the various commands to turn them on and off and on and off. The last formatting command is really an unformatting command, meaning it will remove any text formatting and return the text to the original standard look. Let's change what text I have selected by making it a blue font and a yellow formatting. To return the text back to my standard black, I just highlight and hold down Control plus spacebar to remove the formatting. Now, for my most used shortcut, undo. The undo command will let you travel back in time by undoing the previous action. And you can go back multiple commands in a row. This has saved me many times over, almost daily. The not quite opposite shortcut is the redo command, which will repeat the last command. This is more of a productivity trick. Let's see these in action. Okay, let's see this in action. I do need to do two separate commands so that we can undo them. My first one is gonna take those words and give the red font to them. Then I'm gonna highlight the next one and make this one yellow, just so we have a highlighting. And now I'm gonna be able to undo my last step, which was the yellow highlighting. When I do Control Z, that disappears. And if I do Control Z a second time, it undoes the red font. So multiple control Z's will undo going back and back and back. The redo control Y command works differently. If you just did multiple undos, it will reverse them and put them back in place. See how my redo command issued twice brings back the red font and then the yellow highlighting. Now, Let's use the redo command differently to repeat the last issued command, not just redoing the undo. For our demo, I will change the word blue to a blue font color, and then move to the word in step seven. With the word redo highlighted, I will then issue the control Y redo command to redo the last command of changing the word to blue. Bingo. This redoing the last command works on almost any single command, like the backspace delete command. I delete once and then issue the control Y redo command again to repeat and repeat and repeat. Okay, let's change gears and learn keyboard shortcuts to navigate our lines of text. So let's try these quick tricks out. You put the cursor in between two letters, in our case, in the middle of front. If I hit the home key, it jumps to the beginning of that line on the farthest left. If I hit the end key, it jumps to the farthest right at the end of the line. So those two keys are gonna work the way that you expect. The control plus home key will take us to the start of the text. 
The start of the text will vary based on where you're at in whichever program you're using. In PowerPoint, and in this particular case, it is the text placeholder that it takes us to the top of. And Control N will take us to the bottom right corner. Now watch when we change context. I'm going to click on our slide thumbnails, and when I do Control Home, it takes me to the very first slide, and due to Control End, it will take me to the very last slide. So context of where the cursor is located changes the location. In Word, it takes you to the beginning of a Word document versus the Control End going to the end of a document. Within a spreadsheet, the Home control takes us to cell A1, and control N takes us to the bottom right-hand corner of the spreadsheet. Now look at quick navigation with the keyboard. Control plus and a left or right arrow key will move us one word at a time, left or right. The control plus the up or down arrow key will move us up or down by paragraph. With these techniques, we can easily incorporate group text selection shortcuts. The trick is to hold on the shift key and then incorporate our keyboard navigation techniques that we just learned. Here, I'm holding on the shift key and just using our arrow key to move to the left to highlight words or to the right to highlight letters at a time. But if I hold on the shift key and hit the end key, it jumps to the end of the line. If I hold on the shift key and hit the home key, it goes to the start of the line. The last text selection shortcut is Select All Text. Control A, A for All, will select all the text in the text box or the document. Control A is one of my favorites to select everything to make a global change. So that's it. All the shortcuts you must know to use Microsoft Office. This handy cheat sheet PDF is available at our website of power-up.training. See the link below in the comments. If you have questions or requests for new free video training topics, leave them too in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as it helps us build our community and continue to make free training videos for you. Until then, go power up.